All right, let's go with medical update. Timmy will be out tomorrow. He'll be evaluated in a few days. Omax is out. He suffered a sprained ankle today. Uh, so we'll evaluate him in a couple days, and Gaffer will be questionable, but he's feeling better. Was Gafford able to practice today? Uh, he, he just watched from the sideline. With, this, with his status being in question for tomorrow, what is that? What onus does that put on Lively and uh, Maxie? Yeah, I think uh, it just you know puts them maybe in a different situation, but not we're not asking them to do uh, anything different. <coughs> I think uh, you could uh, also look at some other guys, uh, you know, having to step into uh, that role too. What do you see as the biggest challenge going into game three? And what adjustments do you think the Clippers are making? Yeah, I think you look at just being, um, we got to be hungry. We've got to protect home. Um, just understanding you can be beaten at home. Um, again, playing with pace, and we got to take care of the ball. And uh, we got, you know, understanding how important it is to make open shots against them. Um, and then defensively, we got to just try to make it as tough as possible. I know your whole team plays really good on the defensive end. Hone in on Derrick Jones. How did he do overall? Yeah, I thought uh, D. Jones did a, a great job of making it tough. That's all you can do um, when you talk about, you know, PG, Kawhi, um, Harden, you know, Westbrook. Those guys are really good. They've seen everything. Um, all you can, you know, try to make it as tough as possible. Don't give them any easy or freebies um, because if you do, that's, you know, their, their confidence starts to grow. So I thought D. Jones did a really good job. What did you think about uh, Kawhi? Obviously, his first game in a while. What did you see with him? Yeah, I, I think uh, for his first game, it was it was good. Uh, defensively, he came up with steals. Uh, he took what the defense gave him. Um, again, uh, as the longer the series goes and the more he plays, he's he's you know he's Kawhi, and so um, I thought he played well. Obviously, some of it depends on uh, Gafford's availability, but how how can you guys? Get back those lobs. Get back to the Clippers have done a really good job of shutting that down. I know Lively got a couple um, last game. Yeah, that's their game plan. Make Luca score. So I don't know if we can get them back. We got to take what they give us. Um, and right now, that's what they're giving us is is for to see if Luca is gonna you know um, take those shots and and he's got to be able to make them. But they're not they're not letting us uh, you know giving us the lob. So. Uh, our, our quarterbacks have to take what they're giving us. You know, obviously, Max, he's not necessarily a lob guy at this point in his career. He did play a lot of five. Can you describe his impact that doesn't show up when you look at a box score line? Yeah, when you look at Maxie's uh, defensive side, I mean, um, when you look at he tends to always be um, a positive uh, on the floor. Uh, defensively and then offensively, he's making the right plays. Um, I thought in the fourth quarter he made uh, big plays defensively and then offensively he made a big three. Um, and then also being the quarterback of coming out of the double teams, uh, being able to you know find the right guy. He's he's done that for us uh, in this series, and we're going to need him to continue to do that. You mentioned, you mentioned uh, the offense and them trying to make Lucas score primarily. How important do you think? PJ, his offensive prowess, just what he brings to it. Um, how important do you think he'll be on offense moving forward? Yeah, I think uh, when you look at the threes that he made for us were big. Uh, his ability to play in the open court, to get to the rim, to get to the free throw line uh, is huge, and we're going to need him to continue to do that. You guys handled the physicality well in game two. Do you see that as a, an inevitable part of this series the rest of the way, and how important does that make going out in as they say, hit first. Yeah, it's going to be physical all the way to the end. Um, that's just the way that f this series is set up. Um, and so um, who can absorb it and who can uh, embrace it is the, you know, has been the one that has come out on top. And so um, for that, we got to understand it's going to be physical tomorrow. It's been noticeable uh, in the glimpses that we were able to be in practice that in shooting drills. Uh, Kai and Luca have been together, almost like locked at the hip. And recently, uh, Washington has been shooting with him. Is that purposeful on y'all's part, or is that just kind of how those guys have kind of gravitated to one another? Yeah, I think uh, when you look at the the shooting, uh, 
uh, Luke and Kai, I think, have been together uh, pretty much the whole year. Um, but I think when you look at um, PJ uh, starting to shoot with those guys, I think he's been there uh, for a little bit now, um, not just here of late. Um, but they always tend to find someone uh, to invite into their shooting group uh, to, to, for competition purposes, um, but also to help. So it's, it's been great for our leaders to do that. In the, in the playoffs, stars minutes tend to go up, rotations tend to tighten. What, what's your message to guys whose roles might change, might diminish during a, a playoff series? Yeah, I think just to, to be patient, to, to understand that it's uh, right now it's about winning and uh, doing everything to win. And sometimes minutes uh, can be uh, down or minutes can be up. Um, and so uh, you just have to, everything's about the team. Um, and it's no different than the regular season. Um, you know, sometimes we make a big difference or we make a big deal about minutes going up or minutes going down, but it's always about winning. And so, um, you know, just understanding sometimes the rotation will, will, will shorten. Um, sometimes there will be a guy that, you know, is probably going to play a little bit more than the other just because of uh, matchups or the way that he's playing. When you look at the series as how you approach it as a coach, how do you game the game, decide what buttons to push, when to push them, and for you from a communication standpoint on how to communicate your message to you guys, depending on the moment in that way? Wait, repeat that question, please. Well, how does your communication style change, or if it does, during the playoffs to continue to keep guys motivated based off of what you need them to do in their particular moment? Does that change for you, or does it remain the same based off of what you normally do? Yeah, I think it's about being consistent. Uh, it doesn't change uh, as a regular season or playoffs. It's about being consistent and being honest and truthful. Um, sometimes uh, players uh, tend to not like the truth in, in the f 10 seconds that they hear, but uh, there's a respect uh, there that it takes place. And so uh, nothing has changed uh, about being honest and truthful uh, in the moment. And uh, that's the way I've always been and will continue to be. When a guy goes through a couple of tough games in a playoff series like Gaffer has, what's the message that you give him to kind of keep him lifted and keep him going? Yeah, I think, um, you know, sometimes we can look we look at things a little different. This isn't the regular season. This is, you know, the playoffs. And um, game one is over. Game two is over. It's now just you're focused on game three and uh, focusing on that first possession offensively or defensively. And and just showing him on, on tape here as we go forward what he's had success with. Uh, again, uh, we've missed not just Gafford, but we've missed some layups, you know, um, and give credit to uh, the Clippers. But it's uh, also, you know, it's part of the game, and it's about just focusing and being unselfish for, for game three. And that's all. We can't, you know, worry about anything else. And for Gafford or for Luca or for Kai, um, that's what it's all about. What do you think of Lively's performance in game two? Obviously, he, game one, he hadn't played in a couple of weeks. He's been through a lot. Game two, he really seemed to step yeah. into the situation. He was good in game one. He was really good in game two. And so, um, you know, if Gaff is out, we're, we're going to need him to be good in game three. Um, but I think he's he's embraced the uh, experience. Um, you know, as we've talked about, he's a different 20-year-old. Um, Again, just understanding life experiences can help you grow a little bit faster. Um, and, and for him, he's he's playing well for us, and we're going to continue to need him to do do that on both ends, offensively and defensively. How much does playing a home game, at, playing a game at home in a playoff series, help some of the role players? Uh, that that is a saying um, that that the role players uh, tend to play better at home, and uh, and hopefully that's the case. Uh, for us being home for game three and four, um, for our role, play, road player, uh, role players to, to play better. But I thought they played well uh, on the road in, in, in the last game. I thought our role players played extremely well. When you talk about Maxie and those guys, um, even Josh, I thought those guys played well.